We're going to cover three different pieces of hardware in this video. We're going to talk about shoulder bolts, ball plungers, and rotary speed dampers or rotary speed limiters, they're sometimes called. Let's start with shoulder bolts. Uh, there are two shoulder bolts in this assembly and uh, one of them is right here and the other one is on this side over here. And uh, shoulder bolts can be used in a variety of different applications. In this case, we're using them as, um, uh, as, as axles about which to rotate. And so, uh, if, if, we, if we do a cross section here, so let's, let's, uh, do a cross section of this particular shoulder bolt right there. We'll just select a mid plane. <clears throat> okay, so we've got a cross section here, and we can see, uh, just as is typical for any shoulder bolt, there are uh, threads down at the bottom, and then there's a, a clean shank with, with no threads, just a, a straight diameter all the way across. And that, that uh, unthreaded clean diameter is used as the, uh, uh, the, the bearing interface for our, uh, for our axle. Uh, this part right here is a sleeve bearing. Uh, it's probably a, a brass sleeve bearing. I don't recall at the moment what material it's made out of, but uh, it's a, a sleeve bearing. And you might recall from our, our bearings uh, lesson that there are ball bearings and there are sleeve bearings. Uh, both facilitate rotational movement. Uh, the sleeve bearing simply doesn't have balls. It's a little bit less sophisticated bearing, but it's also cheaper. And when you don't need something that it's going to be, you know, rotating really fast or really often, uh, a, a sleeve bearing is a great alternative or a great option because they're less expensive. So for this particular application, uh, our, our mechanism was not going to be turning at high speeds. It was not going to be turning, uh, very frequently either, but it, it does need to turn. So we used a, a sleeve bearing right here. And um, a shoulder bolt is just the perfect piece of hardware to go through that sleeve bearing because otherwise we would have to get a, um, uh, a rod stock and we'd have to probably thread the end of the rod stock and then do something up at the head area over here so that we could actually turn it, turn the threads into the threaded hole. Uh, but with the, uh, with a shoulder bolt, all of that geometry is already built into this off the shelf part. You know, this shoulder bolt right here probably cost, I don't know, five dollars or something like that, which, you know, when you're building a custom machine is, is really cheap to get, uh, a part that's going to do exactly what you need it to do. If we were to build this, this, uh, uh, the shoulder bolt custom, you know, for starting with, uh, unthreaded shaft or something like that and just build a custom part, we'd probably pay, Oh, uh, I don't know, a hundred dollars or a hundred fifty dollars, something like that. So five dollars is is really a steal, and that's that's one way that you can use a shoulder bolt. Um, as you can see, here's the shoulder down here. So we have a step in our mating component. This guy right here. Here's the step, and then there's a shoulder right here in the bolt. Um, in fact, if I make that component transparent, you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so there's your, there's your shoulder right here. Well, it's selecting the wrong part, but, uh, right here where I'm pointing, that's, that's the shoulder. And then there's this kind of gradual transition. You can see actually there's, there is technically a little bit of interference here. So really this, this corner on the mating part should have been rounded off a little bit, but, um, for what we were doing, it didn't really make any difference. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the shoulder, uh, interfaces with the step right here and, uh, uh, causes the, the bolt to bottom out so that our clean diameter length is, is a known fixed length and we can use that to di design around. We've got our, again, our, our sleeve bearing here and we've got another component right here that we'll talk about in just a second. And, uh, those, uh, we've got a couple of, of shims in here just to take up a little bit of extra gap as needed. So there's not a lot of slop with that component shifting back and forth, left and right. This component here, that is, um, let's say, I'll make that not, not transparent again. There we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the next part we're going to talk about is the rotary speed limiter or, or rotary damper, sometimes called. Uh, let's, 
get out of this cross section and take a look at the overall motion of this thing. So th this is a uh, a heat gun and here's a the nozzle out here this is where the really hot air comes out of and we had this this nozzle interfaced with a, a component that we needed to apply heat to um, and so uh, our, our component was sitting right around here where my mouse is and we needed to be able to remove this nozzle away from that component quickly so what we did is we put a little handle here and now this whole thing rotates, so we can ro rotate it up in place. We have our component that we're working on, applying to heat right here. It's getting heated. And then when we're done, we quickly rotate this out of the place. We're, rotate this out of place. And uh, it, it removes the heat from that component. Uh, so the rotary damper, uh, the reason we have that in place, and let's take a look at it. Here is the rotary damper right there. It's attached to this. You can see it kind of black, transparent. Um, that is part of the rotary damper. That's kind of the base for the rotary damper. And this, this little uh, highlighted gear here spins on the, on the base, the rotary damper base. And that, that spinning motion uh, is resisted just uh, within the rotary damper itself. There's, there's, uh, I think it's just a, a, a tight press fit between two plastic parts. And so it does not spin freely. Um, and that's what we want. And, and then what we did was we created another part with uh, mating gear teeth. And these gear teeth of our mating part made up with the gear teeth on our rotary damper wheel here. Uh, it's, it's not set up in CAD for both of them to spin, but, but you can kind of see, you can visualize how uh, as our teeth rotate past that gear, that rotary damper gear, it causes the rotary damper to spin. And because there's resistance in that, uh, inherent in that spinning, it, it then, uh, uh, applies rotary resistance to, you know, to this part here, which is rigidly attached to this part here, which is rigidly attached to our heater, uh, our, our heating gun here. And so, um, if, if you were to, uh, hold, uh, let's say that you're holding this handle and you just, you let go of that handle, right? Uh, the center of gravity of this heater is somewhere out over here to the right of our pivot axis. So it would, it would cause this thing to just fall down. And if we didn't have the rotary limiter in there, it would just go plunk and it would be kind of a, a, a hard jarring stop. Um, but because we do have that, that rotary damper in there, it, it, it's just a kind of slow, gradual move down like this. And then, uh, let's see, I think we had another stop built in there. Can't remember exactly. Oh, yeah, we have a, a stop right here, the end of this screw and, and the head of that bolt. So it, the, the assembly is prevented from ever going, uh, clockwise beyond this, this, uh, uh, position right here. Uh, and if we didn't have the rotor damper, it would just be a fast, hard boom right there. It would stop and make a big noise. Probably would not be good for the mechanism and the parts in there. But with the rotary damper, it's just a, a long, slow, draw, drawn out, smooth motion. And then click right there at the end. Uh, it stops. So that, that is, uh, how to use a rotary damper. Um, and let's see, what else can we say about this? Uh, I think that's good for the rotary damper. So, uh, finally, we'll get to the, the, the ball plunger, the, the spring loaded ball plunger. Um, and that is these parts right here. You can see there's a ball there and another ball there. <clears throat> and, uh, the way we use this is, uh, as we rotate this up, you see there's this lead in, this chamfered edge right here. And as we continue rotating that heat gun up, that lead in engages these balls and ca causes the balls to um, get displaced into the body of the, um, uh, uh, of the ball plunger. Um, it, the CAD is not set up to actually show the ball move, so you won't see the balls move at all. But in real life, there's a spring inside this body. Let's see, I wonder if doubt it's actually in there. Yeah, it's not actually in there in the CAD, but in, in real life, there's a spring in there that pushes this ball out. So this is kind of like the resting position of the ball. And as uh, whatever you're working with engages this ball, it, it pushes the ball in against the spring. So in our case, 
that uh, that that lead in on our bracket is going to push the balls in right there and then we're going to keep keep going here and out around here those balls are going to pop back out so it would look something like that the balls have popped back out and now they passively pre prevent this bracket from from moving past in the other direction right so so we're right here and um, this uh, this heater gun will not be able to rotate clockwise without a little bit of assistance from the operator because those ball plungers are holding it in place. And we actually have two on the other side as well. Uh, I think we put two in there just as a backup in, in case we needed uh, two instead of one per side. It's a good idea whenever you have the chance to put a couple of extra holes in, in your design just in case uh, you need to put some extra hardware in there later on, you know, after you've built it and you realize, oh shoot, we actually need something else in here. Never a bad idea to just have a couple of extra holes in there. Um, now that's for, you know, some kind of machine design like this. If it was a consumer product, well, you, you wouldn't want to have just extra holes floating around. You'd figure that out before you actually released a uh, a high volume consumer product but for something like this you only build it once um, and and so if you build it and realize oh we, we actually need something else in there it's it's nice to have uh, an extra hole in just in case uh, so that's just a, a little uh, a little trick or tip of the trade right there um, but anyway once uh, once the operator decides okay we're, we're ready to move this heat gun back into place uh, they grab the handle, and there's going to be a little bit of resistance to overcome those uh, those balls, those spring-loaded ball plungers, right? So right now, those ball plungers are, are pushed in again, and at this point, uh, the, the entire thing rotates uh, more or less freely because we still have the resistance of the rotary damp limiter. So if the operator, you know, slipped his hand off the handle, this whole thing would not come crashing down. It would just slowly come down into place. Um, and uh, those are uh, examples of how to use um, shoulder bolts and rotary speed limiters and ball plungers. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer, or a company interested in training your new engineering hires. Our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.